good evening and welcome. I would like to hand over to our chair for this evening, Roxy Harris. So good evening everybody, welcome. Really pleased, thank you. Really pleased to see so many people coming here tonight to help us celebrate the launch of the book, A Meeting of the Continents. History, Memories, Organizational Programs of the International Book Program and Third World Books. The, what I want to do is I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking because you're going to be entertained and instructed and educated by some writers and poets. But what I'm going to do is say a few words about the book fair, <coughs> how it began, a few of my personal memories of it and imagery which I'll never forget, uh, how it ended and what I think it offers us for the future. First thing I'd like to begin with, uh, which I think gives a flavour of it, is my first memory of John saying that we should have this book fair. The reason why I was a bit apprehensive was we were already in the middle of a lot of campaigns, political activist campaigns. Also, a lot of us were holding down full-time jobs and doing many other things. So when John said, in the middle of all that, let's have a book fair. <laughs> so, well, okay, sure, John. <coughs> then he said, well, it's an international book fair. And we'll bring people from everywhere, all over the world. So, well, how are we going to do that, John? And then, not only will we have a book fair, I said, well, okay, I didn't think of a book fair. He said, but as far as that, we'll have a book fair festival week as well, <laughs> in which we'll cover everything poetry, literature, theatre, film, politics, culture and everything alongside the book fair. The base of the book fair had a publishing base, New Beacon Books, Race Today, and Bogle Literature Publications. But we also had a base in a political alliance which had been working together for many years. Political alliance of the Black Terrorist Movement, the Black Youth Movement, and the Race Today Collective. It also built on, of course, many other strands and traditions. And one particular tradition, which often doesn't get mentioned, is the Caribbean Artists Movement in the 1960s, of which John was also a pivotal part. Before I get into saying something about the book for itself, I wanted to take this opportunity, though, to actually pay tribute to both John and Sarah White, because without them, the book fair couldn't have happened. And I've already talked about John's vision, his energy, his commitment, his generosity, and his intelligence, political intelligence. But I also want to pay tribute to Sarah for her dedication, organization, self-effacement, being a hostess, an organizer, everything else in the book fair. <coughs> I think without John and Sarah, their partnership, the book fair couldn't have happened, so I personally would like to give them a round of applause. <laughs> so, one of the things about the book fair that I think needs emphasis is that it was an independent effort, an independent organization and effort. And when I say independent, I mean it wasn't funded. And that's particularly important politically at that time because the political alliance that we were part of had developed an analysis which saw the funding of black organizations by the state at that stage as a method of incorporation and as a way of doing away with people's independence. In fact, a joke that we had at the time, which I still remember, was a lot of black organizations at that time called themselves black self-help organizations. We thought they were black help yourself organizations. <laughs> I also remember, and I'm sure people here who were there remember, the first poetry evening, the first book fair, it was such an electric occasion, unbelievable, to have a thousand people coming out on a horrible Tuesday evening <laughs> in the semi-winter to, to a poetry event. Uh, and it's been immortalized 
on record and tape. So those of you who don't know about that poetry evening, that's something that I'll never forget. Um, Roxy mentioned the, the, how electrifying the, the first um, poetry event was at the, at the first International Book Fair, and it was largely due to the presence of the Jamaican poet Michael Smith. Um, I'm going to recite one of the poems that he that he's well known for. His poem, "We Can't Believe It." We say we can't believe it. We say we can't believe it. Room them a rent, me apply within. But as me go in, cock for what rat and scarf they are so fun. One good, me was a fit run. But me now go sit down on high wall and I come to dumpty. Me a face me reality. One little boy come blowing hard, and me look upon him with scorn, and me realize how oh, me five boy pit me was a victim of the trick them called partisan politics, and me ban me belly and the ball, and me ban me belly and the ball, Lord, me can't believe it. Me say, me can't believe it. Me got a boyfriend named me Sila, and him passed through the port like a ship. More grand fitness for feed, and the whole of we need. What a night, what a plight, and we can't get a bite. My life is a stiff fight, and we can't believe it. We say, we can't believe it. Sitting on the corner with my friend, talking about things and time. Me hear one voice say, who that? We say, how oh, that? How was say how that when me say how oh, that? <laughs> when you take a stop, them lift with them flat teeth start flying, big man start crying, me can't believe it. Me say, me can't believe it. The other day, me pass my yard from the hill. When me take a stop, me hear, hey boy, yes ma'am, hey boy, yes ma'am, you clean up the dog shit, yes ma'am, and me can't believe it. Me say, me can't believe it. Gary, a mother of four, get a work as a domestic. Boss man move in and Bapsi Kaisi because she pregnant again. Bapsi Kaisi because she pregnant again and we can't believe it. We say we can't believe it. The yard the other night when we hear, fire, fire, fire to plate clock. Who dead? You dead? Who dead? Me dead? Who dead? Harry dead? Who dead? Eleven dead? Whoa! Harry Street fire dead on me head and we can't believe it. I said, I can't believe it. Lord, I see some black people living in a one building, but my rent not paid, so they can't stay. Lord, the oppression and the dispossessed can't get no rest. What next? Take a trip from Kingston to Jamaica, take 12 from a dozen, and I see my mama in heaven. Madhouse, madhouse. I said, I can't believe it. I said, I can't believe it. You believe it? Oh, you can believe it when you laugh and blind your eye to it. But you know you believe it, Lord. You know you believe it. I also remember that after the forums, a lot of the discussions continued, but one particular place that they continued was in John and Sarah's kitchen at Albert Road. And that image is so strong with me a room full of people arguing and shouting with each other, particularly the Nigerians. Uh, people like Gigi, BJ, Corey, and so on. And we go on and on and on with these arguments and discussions well into the night. And Sarah, of course, having done all the duties around the book fair, would get back somehow and be the hostess in the kitchen while all these stupid men were arguing. We also have the book fair itself. Um, the opening, the openings of the book fair were always an event full of excitement. We had a lot of people I would call the name, but CMR James, uh, Wallace Yinka, and Pearl Connor, who very recently died. Uh, that was always a great event. There's also the, the, another part of the independence is looking after the stalls of people who are exhibiting books in the book fair. That was another job that we had to take on from our own voluntary efforts. So we had people who were called manning the stalls. Who was going to man some of the stalls and talk to the people, even if you didn't know what that particular publisher's books were. Um, you engaged with the public and you were involved in the book selling. And again, people came forward in big numbers to help us do that. Another type of effort we made 
during the book fair time itself, the actual days of the book fair, which are the Thursday and the Friday and the Saturday, where we put on sessions for school children. Now, there was a nice side and a nightmare side to doing this. Uh, the nice side was sessions on the Thursday and Friday, which we organized for secondary school students where they could actually meet writers, hear the writers reading some of their work, terribly exciting for them, and people like Lauren Scott helped a lot with that. The nightmare side was the Saturday morning session for supplementary school children that we held in the basement. Just because I was involved in education, I was always given that, oh, obviously, could you just look up the school kids session? And I said, well, hold on, can somebody help me? Nobody else was interested. I remember um, approaching Linton on one or two occasions. He said, no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> what we planned for this morning is that children who want to perform something should have a chance to do it, be very brave, and get a lot of support from other children. So whenever somebody's doing something, when they've finished, I want you to give them a very big cheer. And while they're doing their performance, we want you to be very quiet and give them a chance. My name's Roxy Harris, and I'm a teacher in the George Padmore Supplementary School, which operates in North London. You all right? I always talk to my drum, you see, because it's part of my life. Are you okay? You see, yes. yes Would you like to pray for them this morning? You see, you hear? Yeah, man. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, I don't mind if you talk for the drum, you know, because the drum want to talk to you. <laughs> drum, where you come from? Africa. You see what I mean? The drum talking. And they always think the drum does talk to men. You hear who I'm saying for the drum? It's a woman. Woman time. Drum, you all right? Grace today. John had 
become ill and Sarah was overwhelmed with work. Those are three very practical reasons why I thought that the book fair should come to an end. But there was a more, um, I think, even more significant reason, which was that when you think back to the call in the book fair, and then you look forward to 1995, I had to say that we've actually partly achieved what we set out to achieve. A lot of black political activists have found it difficult to say, actually, we were partly successful or we were very successful in achieving some of our aims. Some people are wedded to the idea that, well, nothing's changed, it's exactly the same as it was before. But actually, the book fair did achieve some of its aims. But at the time, we were saying that black writers and artists and other cultural practitioners, actors, and so on, couldn't have a, get a platform, couldn't get their work published, couldn't get a hearing. And one of the functions of the book fair was to pull us all together, give us a platform, and develop these things in publishing and the arts. And I think by the mid to late 1990s, a lot of writers, poets, actors, and other people were able to get in. They were able to get their work published. They didn't need to come to us to get a hearing or to get their, their work heard. And I think that's an achievement. And to where we've got today, where books by black writers win major prizes, are opened up to the general public, are available in any bookshop in the country, I think that's a major achievement. So looking back to where we started and where we are now, I think we did, in fact, achieve something. In the middle, silent. Yeah, let's take him out. Man, very safe trip to Bamberg. Bamberg! 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 Bamberg!
DJ I say, eh, eh, no feel no way. Town is a place that I really can't stay. Them could have ripped me hand, eh, ripped me toe. Me want to go a country, go look man, bus a country bus. I beg you take me home to the place where I feel like I do the boy just run me out. here this evening. The faces and the range of faces and the places in which they have come to this event is, is a kind of reminiscence of what we did and what we attempted to do. The first appeal said very clearly, a meeting of the continents. And that's the title of the book, A Meeting of the Continents. And all the brochures, because we published a brochure with each of those book fairs, are in that book. Plus the people who came to it, what we discussed, and all of that. But in addition to that, the Meeting of the Continents, there was a phrase we used in the appeal for the first book fair, the call, we call it, to the first book fair. <coughs> and in the phrase that we, were, we, we used was, people who created and those who themselves believed in what was being created. The creative productions of the artist inspired by the life of the people. Now that is, connects everything together. The creative work of the artist inspired by the people who consume their creations. That's the phrase we used. And I think that that became the essential call of the book fair. Linton and I always steamed together for the International Poetry Evening. He and I, we introduced the speakers, we decided, the poets decided who they were. And I must say something about that very first International Poetry Evening in 1982. It was the most exciting, 
the best poetry reading I have ever experienced. And most of the people who were there came to the same conclusion. I want, that, I want to really thank everybody who's here. Jean, I remember this, then when Jean came and, uh, M and Michael, when Michael came. And that poem she read was the poem she read that evening, quite right. And um, it was such a powerful impact. It all made on us this meeting of the continents. And I think we have set the groundwork for a future which, as present, <laughs> we are living, and which will be more important as time goes on. Thank you very much.